Hey guys, what's up? Mike here. Uh, today's Wednesday, new comic book day. Um, I've been putting off my Bat book review forever. Batman 6 came out today. I'm definitely going to do it this week. I've been putting them off because of work, school work, um, you know, actual work. Um, I work part time and um, I've been watching basketball a lot. Um, just because football's over, I'm getting distracted by this whole uh, Knicks Jeremy Lin thing. He's a good, very good. He's a pretty good player. So um, today um, I didn't pick much up, but I have a couple of videos coming out. Um, I'm gonna be making a couple of videos today. One of them is gonna be um, this one is gonna be Avenging Spider-Man three and four. Here's three and here's four. Um, the next one after that is gonna be Winter Soldier one and two. And I actually picked up the Amazing Spider-Man variant. For number two, I actually like this cover a lot. It's very interesting. I didn't pick up the regular one because um, I actually don't like um, who does who did this. Um, I think Oscar Del no Gabriel Del Auto does the art, the cover work, and I don't like don't really like his art style. Um, and then other than my bat book, and then I'm gonna be doing Amazing Spider-Man uh, this one, which is really cool cover by um. I think Mike Care did this. Someone did this. I don't remember who. But um, so, so yeah, a couple of things coming out today. Plus, all my bad books are coming out tomorrow since I don't. I'm gonna have a lot more free time. So um, first off is gonna be Avenging Spider-Man number three and four. Um, it's a lot of Spider-Man. So Avenging Spider-Man number three starts off. Um, it's by Zeb Wells, Joe Maguire, and uh, Farron Daniel, the main guys on the the book the colorist and the artist and the writer. Um, not in that order. Um, so last week time we left off in Avenging Spider-Man, uh, Red Hulk was down for the count. Um, he was stabbed in the chest and Peter is escaping with Jonah and he he drops Jonah off and he's like, you know, I had to go back. Um, and Jonah's like, why would you go back? Are you an idiot? And Peter's like, you know, I, I, I have to go back. I left the man behind. So um, you see Mole Man and the uh, the giant super moloid standing over Red Hulk's body, and um, Mole Man tells him to go take the you know upper world and leave um, you know his his kingdom alone. So um, Jonah's trying to contemplate why Spider Man would do this. Why would he go back when they had the chance to leave and go get the Avengers? And Peter says, "I can't do that. No matter what you say about me, you." You know, you, Jonas, Peter won't retaliate whenever Jonas says anything, because, you know, no matter what happens, Peter's always gonna save him, and because um, Peter's an Avenger, that you know, we they don't leave they don't leave a man behind. So um, Jonah leaves the the little Moloids, the normal ones, the very cute ones actually. Um, the children, they're all scared and stuff. So Jonah goes to get help, while Peter goes and. Um, decides to fight off this super moloid who just took down the red hulk with the one sword like stabbed him to the chest like really easily so um peter decides to fight this guy and they he starts throwing punches um they make um and we find out that um the crystal that's in moloid land is actually really sharp it, it can cut through the red hulk, red hulk skin um and um you know everyone has weapons made out of it so and then we see Red Hulk actually pull this sword out of his chest. He gets, he moves his arm, pulls the sword out of his chest, and you know, just lays there for a little bit. So Peter starts fighting this dude, um, and I'm actually really surprised by this. Um, I'm pretty sure he has his spider sense back, and he doesn't use it at all <laughs> in this fight. He just gets his ass whoop. He gets, he just you know, like his costume sword. He's about to die. So he webs up a crystal and manages to um, swing it, and he actually cuts the dude's loincloth by mistake, you know. And you know, all this guy's like disrespected in front of his army, and everyone's just laughing at him because you know he's the leader and he's supposed to be manly and all this. But apparently, you know, they emasculated him, and he was bested. Peter beat him, and he he was locked up. So the moloids go back to their. Um, the Moloids are obviously, you know, now under Peter's, he, he's in charge. So Red Hulk gets up, and he's like, the enemy's close, he's healing, he's like, you know, he, he gives himself that soldier pep talk, pep talk to go fight. So he, he jumps in, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go kill some things. 
and Spider-Man's like, it's alright, um, you know, we've made peace, there's nothing, um, you know, Peter's in charge, and he's like, how do you survive? Um, um, Red Hulk's like, let's smash stuff. Um, yeah, and, um, Red Hulk is like, the way Red Hulk describes himself is actually pretty entertaining. He's like, what do you think this is, a tan? He's like, He's like, I'm a walking aggressive tumor. Like, of course, like I'm gonna heal myself. So he, um, so he decides that he's gonna start cutting dudes down, the one who stabbed them, and then, like rip off his head and kill him. And Peter's like, I beat him. It's okay. You know, those guys, they like, they'll kill you. Like, they can cut you. So they're going home. And the guy who beat Red Hulk is smiling at him. And so Red Hulk just really wants to just chop this dude, like rip this dude a new asshole, but he can't. And Red Hulk, they all escape. Um, they all leave. You see Iron Man, um, Cap, and um, what's his face? Um, Spider Woman, and you know, mission accomplished. We managed to. And Red Hulk, they they assume Red Hulk whooped ass, and you know, he's like, "Did you leave? Um, leave any of them standing?" He's like, "I didn't do anything. It was all the kid." And Red Hulk's like, and it ends with Red Hulk telling him, "You know, never ask me for a ride home again." And um, we uh, see um, you know, Jonah flipping out, upset that you know the Moloids, you know, kidnapped him. But Peter's like, you know, sometimes a little kindness helps. And then we see the mole man like flipping out, being upset, and deciding to implement a new, a new plan. And apparently, this plan will take place in um, Daredevil, as if you've been keeping up with Daredevil. So uh, issue three, um. Um, I've actually been liking this um, Avenging Spider-Man. Issue three wasn't was I felt wasn't as good as issue two. Um, thing is um, yeah um, the art work is still really good. Um, it didn't get really sloppy at all. Um, story-wise, a great great first arc. You know, three issues and didn't drag anything uh, along. You know, it wasn't long and tedious and, like, seven issues long. It was three short issues, which is good. Um, and the story was nice. It's Spider-Man teaming up with people and, uh, you know, whooping ass, sort of. But um, I'm not fond of the fact that Spider-Man didn't use any of his powers. He has Spider-Sense. He Spider-Sense, he can sort of dodge violence, which is his thing. Um, but, you know, I sucked that up. Um, artwork, artwork's pretty solid. Nothing to complain about. Uh, Joe Maduero does a great job of um, drawing Peter. Peter's really tiny, really skinny, really fragile compared to all the other characters. And this art style really works well for this book. I'm really excited to see where um, Joe Maduero and Zebuel Sixus when they um, team up for the rest of the book. But um, right now, um, so issue three, not much to say about it. Um, just wish the action was a little more cohesive and Spider-Man did more Spider-Man-ish things like bouncing around and you know being Spider-Man oh uh, not a big deal so uh, issue 4 is actually something I've been wanting or been expecting for um, a long time um, I want this book to be sort of like Batman Brave and the Bold where it's Spider-Man teaming up each issue with a character of from the Marvel Universe and they just bring people out of nowhere like who like just random heroes like I want the Prince of Orphans or um, bring out the Incredible Hercules I will Incredible Hercules just bring like random people just like uh, I will love a Squirrel Girl issue Squirrel Girl um, who else is there it's just other random like Marvel heroes um, so, um, issue four is actually starring Hawkeye. Hawkeye. It's actually a self-contained issue. You can just read issue four. You don't need to read one through three or any other Amazing Spider-Man. You just need to read one through four. And I guess um, I'm not too fond of Hawkeye, um, but I've been liking the direction Marvel's been taking him with, especially since he's a be in the Avengers movie coming out this summer, and that you know he's probably gonna have a movie of his own. They're giving him a little more character, a little more depth that not many fans know. If they haven't read comics for a long time, especially if you read last week's or um, the Secret Avengers, um, the point one issue of the Secret Avengers that just came out, you know, they gave him a little more, a little more meat to his character. <sighs> Sorry, a little sleepy. So, um, 
this issue is actually the the creative team has changed. Um, Zeb Wells is still the author and the writer, but the artist um, is Greg Land. The inker is Jay Leeson, and the color artist Will Quintina Quintina Quintana, something like that. So the issue starts off in Central Park. Um, these kids are about to, I guess they're practicing archery, or it's an archery competition, and you see three purple arrows smash against the uh, you know, bullseye, t three targets. And they're asking who, who and the coach or the guy running it, he's like, who released, and no one. And then he looks at his back and he's like, oh, it was this damn Avenger. So, um... So Spider Man shows up and he's like, We get it, Hawkeye, you you know how to shoot. You can shoot good you shoot good and Hawkeye's like, I'm training. I'm supposed to be training today, so he he's getting a little, you know, antsy. So they decide to um so Peter decides to um go out and uh go out on patrol and a boy actually shows up to Hawkeye, he's like, Can you sign my bow? Hawkeye's like, Oh sure kid. Compound bow, ew. He's like Wow, did your dad wish you were a girl or something? It was it's Hawkeye's pretty he's a big douchebag in this beginning of the issue. So, uh, he's Captain America asked Hawkeye to go on a um patrol. Hawkeye doesn't go on patrol. He only trains and then fights big super bad guys. That's his thing. So uh they go on patrol and Hawkeye's on this like flying motorcycle that looks like something out of like Blade Runner. Or the fifth element. It's crazy. Um I, it looks like it could drive on the ground, but it looks it's just a flying motorcycle. So, um Hawkeye's just being a dick. And he's like, you know, awesome mode of transportation, Spider Man, I'm gonna see you later. Uh, I'll catch you uh, you catch up. And Peter doesn't know really what to do. So he's just like, Alright, whatever. So they got on patrol, they find uh three members dressed as snakes, and you Peter's thing is the one liner and then he gets into a fight. Um Hawkeye sort of messes up the one-liner and takes all three guys down. And um, Peter's like, what if you miss? And Hawkeye says, I don't miss. So they had to wait, actually, for um, these guys to wake up to, um, you know, find out what these guys are doing. And Hawkeye explains, you know, Peter explains, he's like, what do you do? He's like, don't you watch TV? He's like, you know, this is like CSI or Law and Order. We wake these guys up and we question them. He's like, I train. It's just that's the basic theme. He's like Hawkeye only trains. That's all he does. So they um they find out where the Serpent Society is going to be or their next job, and Peter webs up a wall to to have the car stop. Hawkeye shoots the car. Car crashes. Peter now has to wait for another guy to wake up because he didn't crash up into a wall of webs. So they wait um and they find out they these guys are attacking Grand Grand Central. They're gonna like bomb it, or they're gonna put, they're gonna do the terrorist. So they um are staking it out, and Hawkeye doesn't stake out things. He just stands. He he's just standing around shooting arrows, not really paying attention. And and Peter gets he gets aggravated. He 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 gets mad. He's, you know, this is game time. What the hell are you doing? Can't you just sit still for five minutes? And Hawkeye's like, no. And then Peter is like, you know, I thought you were joking, I thought you were kidding, but all you do is train. And then Hawkeye goes into this whole thing about why he trains so much. Is it because he doesn't miss, but, you know, Peter's like, oh, you don't miss, but he's like, I can't miss. That's, he's like, I don't, he's like, not because he doesn't miss, he says, I can't miss. And because he's on this team with superhumans, um, you know, who, who have all these amazing abilities, and, you know, if he doesn't train, if he's not the best, if he's not the best at what he does, um... You know, what is he? He's just a, a guy with a bow. And, you know, he could have been a normal person. He could have had a good life with Mockingbird, um, Bobby Morris. But he, he wants to be a hero. And so he trains constantly. So, you know, because he, he has confidence issues. And, you know, that's evident in his character. And, um, you know, if he misses, he's just a guy with a bow. And he's been playing around and been a, he's been a whole joke his he'll be, his life that will be have been you know nothing he's been fooling himself that he's a hero so that's why he trains so he so he doesn't miss so he can't miss so peter's like um you know peter tries to tell him he's like you know i understand what you're going like what you're going to do so peter has confidence issues so has what you can he's 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 been ostracized by the city and he's had you know confidence problems of his own 
he's even given up being Spider-Man because of his issues, because of the burden his his the job and his abilities get put on him. So they see um, Sidewinder about to like l grenade launcher, um, smiling at him. As Peter sees him through some binoculars, and um, you know they he sees that they're getting ambushed. So Peter's is like, we don't have time for this. He's got a grenade launcher. He's 700 yards away. No. And um, and Hawkeye's like, you know what? Just give me time. Let me take the shot. Peter's like, no time for showboating. I, I like, we can't risk it. I'm gonna go take him out. And he dashes off to go chase of him. So Hawkeye. Hawkeye beats up some Serpent Society dudes. Takes the shot. And you know he shoots this thing across like the city, like 700 yards away. Um, it zips, it it lands right at Sidewinder's feet, which is just like what? And then Peter kicks this dude in the face, and Hawkeye's so confused, he's like, "Did I get him? I don't know." You know what, Spider-Man? I'm just gonna come and check. So he, Hawkeye shows up, and Peter actually before Hawkeye shows up, Peter picks up the arrow and sort of stabs. Sidewinder and the chest with it. It's an electric arrow. It's not that. It's like a stun arrow, so it's not gonna kill him. So um, Hawkeye shows up and he's like, "Yes, I did. I got him." And he's and he's like, "Yeah, I got him. Why are you an Avenger again? You, you know, you gotta, you're a little too slow for this." And then Hawkeye's like, "I guess I know now why Cap puts us together. Put us together tonight." And Spider-Man's like, "Yeah, I guess so." So this this issue actually was really good. I really like this issue. Um, and you know, as always with the Avenging Spider-Man, it comes with a free digital copy. Zebwells, I, I'm I actually really like this. I like this issue more than I liked issues one through three. Especially this idea of you know a one-time self-contained issue of Spider-Man on an adventure with another hero. And there was a lot of character development, you know, about Hawkeye that you know. Rick Remender did it in Secret Avengers, but now we got a little bit more about a little more into his character and about why he's such a, you know, why he's such a, he's so his his personality is so boisterous and he seems like a dick sometimes because it he has confidence issues and those confidence issues, you know, he tries to hide it with this this swagger, um, and you know by training and constantly training just so he could be at the top of his game, which is which is amazing, you know. Um, and it's really, really, um, you know, I, I love the fact that they're developing these characters and I hope they continue, or Zeb Wells continues to develop these characters in these books, especially in the next issue. I believe issue five is a cap song, Captain America. I hope self-contained. I don't want to read a long arc or an arc. Um, I prefer a self-contained issue, but, um, so Zeb Wells, great, great storyline. And I especially loved how Peter, he's like, you know, he missed, but I'm going to help him out. When it comes to the art, um, I don't. Uh, Greg Glenn's not bad. He did he did the cover and he did the interior art. Um, he did he was on the X Men for a while. Um, one of the X Men books, I think it was. Um, I think it was just X Men, or maybe before the reboot. I don't remember when it was book. It was on Uncanny, I think. But um, he did he did a great job. Um, Greg Glenn's art is very nice. Um, very streamlined. Very super heroic. Um. I don't like the way he draws Clint in certain panels, and the the way the panels line are laid out, laid out are weird, but it's not a big deal. Um, I'm not too fond of the way he draws Spider-Man's webs. I don't like the super realistic web thing where it's like, like you know, stream and like multiple streams and then a little like a little spiral thing. I don't like that. But his artwork is solid. Colors are great. Um, you know, it's and I. I'm not too fond of Hawkeye's new costume. It's very well. I guess because of the movie, they're they're streamlining the costume, removing the mask, so he's just in like body armor and um with the arrows. I still like the purple though, but solid issue. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. So um, so Avengers Spider-Man three, I believe I gave it a three out of five, maybe a four. I don't remember. I had to watch the video, but uh, but Avengers Spider-Man four out of five, number four. Great great jobs up Wells and uh, Greg Land, and I I'm hoping for more of this from Marvel. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, more stuff is gonna be up. It's gonna be thrown up randomly tonight, slash tomorrow morning, slash tomorrow night, slash Friday, slash Saturday, whatever. So um, let me know what you guys think of the book and you know, so on and so forth. This video is getting really long, so I'm gonna get out of here. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great night.